Fred McGuff and doing his thing, reviewing videos and movies and things, doing his thing. Okay, The Giver, 1991. Um, okay, starring, well, starring, I suppose, Jack Armstrong as Sean Barker and Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's in this big name. And this is action, comedy, and horror, okay? And it's directed by Screaming Mad George and Steve Wang. Yeah. Okay, this is how this movie starts off. Listen to this. <coughs> At the beginning of time, aliens come to Earth to create the ultimate organic weapon. They created mankind by planting a special gene into man. They created the Zoanoids. Humans who can change at will into super monster soldiers. Eons later, the Zoanoid leader called the Zoa Lord has awakened and formed the Kronos Corporation to further develop the Zoanoid technology for world domination. Among the alien remains was found the unit, a bio-boosted alien armor worn by the aliens. It serves as an ordinary shield. If the wearer is human, it increases his natural powers a hundredfold. He becomes the Giver. No, not MacGyver. Not the guy with the mullet. No, he becomes the Giver. But how to actuate, activate it remains a mystery. Dr. Tetsu Sigawa, a research scientist at Kronos, senses danger. If this unit is activated by the Zoa Lord, now the doctor has stolen it and is on the run. So that's how this starts, and it starts off like uh, Star Wars. It, it scrolls up the screen. It's explaining everything. And seeing as um, Mark Hamill is in this, it's uh, yeah, reminds you a bit of Star Wars. Okay, so yeah, we got Mark Hamill, big Star Wars hero, big Star Wars legend. Uh, nice to see him in this. But it's hard to see him as anything else. He's, it's like Luke Skywalker wearing a moustache. He's got a moustache in this. He plays a CIA guy. Dr. Tetsu has contacted him. And he's on the case. He's trying to find Dr. Tetsu and talk about this uh, this unit, this whatever he's trying to hide. So yeah, look. This is a spoiler review. In case you didn't know, spoilers. So, you know, be careful. I'm going to spoil this. Uh, okay, so Mark Hamill. Big red one, slipstream. Uh, he does a lot of voice acting, major amount of voice action act, acting. Uh, he was also in Village of the Dams, Kingsman, Secret Service, The Last Jedi, of course. Um, and... Uh, yeah, he does the Joker voice in in uh, animated animated uh, Batman stuff and video games, and he also does a lot of other things. He's got a huge, he's a huge profession outside of acting. He does the voice acting, um. So yeah, he's in this. He's playing a CIA guy. Uh, he's trying to help uh, Doctor Tetsu. But Doctor Tetsu hides it before he gets caught by the bad guys. And the bad guys um, can change into these weird alien creatures. So look, I'm going to read the back of the box as well. Okay, this might help. Mark Hamill and the team behind horror classic Reanimator join forces for this electrifying live action adaptation of Yoshiki Takaya's celebrated manga series. Having been smuggled out of the mysterious Kronos Corporation, by one of its researchers, a bioweapon known as the Giver Unit, which transforms its holder into a lethal super being, ends up in the hands of Sean, a young martial arts student. Now, Sean is played by Jack Armstrong, and you may have seen him in Student Bodies, TV work, Simon and Simon, Quantum Leap, Alf, Dark Justice, Friends, VIP, The Tick, uh, uh, Grimm, Bone, and Scandal. So yeah, he's been in a lot of things. And uh, okay, where is it? A young martial artist, Sean soon finds himself in the sights of the Kronos Corporation and its mutant henchmen who will stop at nothing to retrieve their treasured device. Produced by Brian Yuzna, Society, Bride of Reanimator. Um, 
and co-directed by special effects master Screamin' Mad George and Steve Wang. The Giver is an effects-laden extravaganza featuring a host of familiar genre faces, including Michael Berryman, uh, The Hills Have Eyes. Now, Michael Berryman was also in Weird Science, uh, The Hills Have Eyes, Part 2, 1 and 2, Devil's Rejects, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Deadly Blessing, My Science Project. Uh, so, yeah, he's a legend. He's, he's been a lot of things. You know, you know him well in the museum. And, uh, and David Gale, reanimator. Yes, David Gale. He plays Fulton Balkus. I think he's our um, Zoa, Zoa Lord. Is that what they call him? Zoa Lord, yeah. So... You may have seen he's been in Reanimator 1 and 2, The Brain, The First Power, Switch. So David Gale is in this. And do you know who makes an appearance? The other, the other guy from um, Reanimator, uh, Jeffrey Coombs, that's the man, Jeffrey Coombs. He makes an appearance in this. So, yeah. Um, so we have, that's that's the basic plot of this. Uh, Screaming Mad George, He's he worked with Stan Winston on Predator. So he, so on special effects, so he knows costumes. The costumes in this are really good. The guy for suit is great. Um, and other things Scream Mad George has worked on is The Abyss, Art Department, A Big Trouble in Little China, visual effects on that, Reanimator 2 and Beyond Reanimator, Space Truckers, Progeny, This is the End, Kung Fu Rascals, The Dentist 2, Curse 2, Arena, Don't Panic, Hide and Go Shriek. And Stephen Wang has worked on Kung Fu Rascals, Guyver Dark Hero, and Drive 97. Um, so, yeah, so the special effects guys directing this, and I think they were in over their heads. Um, it looks great, but I don't think the action was handled too well. I think they needed a bit more sort of, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, they've been on sets, they've done visual effects, but I think they needed more directing work. Um, yeah, just the fight scenes in this, I think they needed a good choreographer, fight choreographer. Um, that's one thing's that's one thing about this movie for me is the fight scenes weren't great. They were got boring and repetitive and they needed more a bigger scale, more explosions, maybe some weapons. Um but look, what the quibbles, yeah, quibbles. Um what else do we have? We have Vivian, Vivian Yu playing uh, Ms. Key Segawa, the doctor's daughter. And she's sort of, she's Sean's love interest in this as well. And the two of them are trying to deal with this situation. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and she was in The Last Emperor, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Pillow Book, The Joy Luck Club, and Heaven and Earth. And, um, okay, so you've got David Gale trying to get his hands on the the um, Giver tech and yeah and the that's basically what you have here the the bad guys are after the 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 Giver and um Mark Hamill's in there as well to as a CIA guy to um deal with this Giver problem and this uh, bad guy problem um so yeah that's it. Another person in this you, you may recognise is Willard E. Pugh, and he plays Castle, and he was in Robocop 2, Colour Purple, Progeny, Air Force 1, Hills of Eyes 2, Amazon Women on the Moon, uh, Rage in Harlem, and CB4. And, uh, yeah, so look, it's pretty run the mill. Um, you basically come to a, a big fight, a big fight in the end between our guy, um, Guyver, against... Zoa Lord, David Gale, and yeah, some pretty great special effects. Um, there's a great part where Mark Hamill gets turned into this. It's a body horror creature that um would turn little titties. They uh, turn them white. You you'll never look at Mark or you'll never look at Luke Skywalker again in the same way. But yeah, the special effects are good. Um, as I said. You've got Luke Skywalker turning into a beast at the end. Um, yeah, there's some. Yeah, I'm kind of this disappointed me a lot. I was hoping for more. Um, I feel like I I I miss when I saw this. I feel like I missed out on this. 
and you know why you've why you've never seen this but i think the reason is it's pretty forgettable after you've seen it um you won't forget the costumes the costumes are great uh and yeah there's some some enjoyable stuff but i think um you know it's a really big letdown for for anyone watching it because it looks so great even the theme tune at the start sounds great um so you really think you're getting into something something that's you know you know it's not gonna be forgettable it's gonna be interesting but and mark hamill in it and so yeah sad to say it's a bit of a letdown and um, there is a sequel that i'm going to check out seeing as i've seen this um i think it's called guyver dark hero so i'm going to check that out and see what it's like it's stephen wang directed that so i'm going to see is it better or worse um but yeah look screaming mad george he didn't do much after this um but you know yeah i don't yeah with a name like that anyway so yeah um what else can i say about this yeah that's about it i'll give you the score um two nearly a three a 2.9 and um, i think giving it a three for just the visual effects is uh is the way to go because yeah the, the suits are great the creature suits and, and i love the idea i mean i'd say the mangas are great i like the the setup for this the story and um, it's like a superhero movie before superheroes got big i'd say if you remade remade this nowadays you know revamped it reboot it and with the special effects they can do nowadays it would probably be a big hit um because the the story as i said that sort of um story there this you know about monster super monster soldiers and uh zonoid leaders and all that it's um yeah could be good who knows so yes mm, anyway there is a big fight in the end between uh our guy guyver and saving the day good creature effect at the end um but yeah i wouldn't be in a rush to watch this again it's a shame because visually it looks, it looks great and uh, it's obviously some great people involved in this a lot of talent but yeah this falls flat for me yeah i wanted to love this and i want i was hoping to find a hidden gem but what can you do so okay the diver what did you think did you enjoy it am i wrong am i right let me know thanks for watching fred's channel and uh, fred appreciates us i sure do and uh yeah this has been fred mcguffin giving you the go on the giver